Manhattan is surrounded by water on all sides, but we can't swim in it. And Plus Pool will allow that to happen cleanly, but safely. It filters the water of the river. It's cleaning the river every day. That's a whole new way of thinking about architecture. Guess who's got his first match tomorrow? Yeah, fucking climbing the ladder. Top 50 people in Brooklyn. I'm going to number one, baby. This is Play Lab. This space is currently Play Lab Studio. It's been Play Lab Studio for about a year and a half. We're a multidisciplinary design office. Jeff and I met in school. We realized that we had similar interests in the way that we wanted to work in art and design. As we left school, we wanted a way to continue to explore as we did in school and not have to rely on a client or uh, somebody telling us what they want. Don called us up and we met at this coffee shop by his office and he knew that we that were trained as graphic designers and that we could figure out a way to tell the story a little bit and kind of build a world around it graphically. I mean, I guess it took me, what, six years to sort of realize that you don't act, nobody actually swims in the rivers and the rivers are there, but they're not really looked at like a body of water that you can use so much. Part of it was like, well, that seems kind of ridiculous that you're surrounded by all this water and you can't actually swim in it. And then in a larger sense, and this is, I think, why like family and play that work so well together is that is it possible for actually designers to launch ideas as opposed to designing someone else's ideas? So that's basically why we started talking to these guys in Play Lab about doing a pool. That's a floating pool in the New York Harbor. It would actually filter water from the river, bring it into the pool so that the city can swim in clean river water and then push it back out into the river. It's shaped like a plus because we wanted the pool to be for everybody. So there are literally four different pools stuck together in the shape of a plus. One pool for lounging, one pool for children, one pool for laps, sports. I don't know how we can stop people from taking a no, shit. No, they, they will. Well, we're filtering a lot more shit coming in, so yeah, I think exactly. filtering some shit going out is pretty Further expected. Happens, yeah. Shit happens. Shit happens. It will happen. Shit will happen. The experience of being at a pool is obviously on the forefront of our mind. That is what we're going to end up focusing on, you know? What is it like to change? What is it like to put stuff in lock lockers? Where are the bathrooms and how does that feel? And obviously a lot of people will want to go to this thing if it happens. We know that. So how do we control that? Now what we're realizing about this project that's one of the most important things is this reclaiming of public space. That was one of the, the big things that we liked about the High Line, which is another significant project of saying like, you know, two guys got together and they said this uh, elevated train should not come down, that we should save it and then make one of the greatest parks of all time. And all these milestones, the, the pop-up pool at Brooklyn Bridge Park that just happened, what else, the dumpster pools, McCarran pool opening. Opening day, Bloomberg said something like, this day is all about the water, and, and New York and water, the relationship is gonna change. Plus pool is about the same exact thing. The only way that we would continue to work on the project, and it's been two over two years now that we've been working on this, is if we got validation from people outside of us. And the first group that came to us was Arup, which was one of the largest engineering firms in the world that have worked on some of the most significant engineering projects of all time, besides maybe the pyramids or something. And, uh, and pyramid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where it started. From, from that day on, it was like, okay, well shit, we're in. People think that there's like, things are impossible, or that there's a certain way things happen. And what we're figuring out is there's no guidebook for this, and there's no certain way that this happens. You just kind of get in and you start pushing around. It's the fact that if, you know, you see this like vacant piece of land in New York City and you want that turned into a park, then you just start calling some people. And we've spent the past eight months meeting with the city. But it's fun. I wake up being like, shit, like what? I can't believe my wife is letting me do this. And then at the end of the day, my wife is like, I'm so glad you're doing this. Just to let you do it, I think that's... <laughs>